Hello, all my art loving people out there. Yes, as the title implied, I bought everything on my wish list because Christmas passed and my birthday passed, and my birthday is on Christmas. So, once my birthday and Christmas passed, I decided to buy everything that was left on my wish list, and here it all is. It's actually not that much stuff, but yet when you look at it individually, it kind of is a lot of stuff. So we are going to open this, swatch most of it, and just have a really good time today with all these goodies. Plus, I have a really special, unique, incredible product you're not going to want to miss towards the end. Look at this lovely pile of supplies. Now, I received a lot of money from my in-laws for my Christmas and birthday present and I took about $230 of it and bought everything on my wish list. And one thing I didn't even know I wanted, which is super special, which I will show to you after the swatching. So you have to stay tuned to the end because you're gonna wanna see it. It's, it's special. Okay, first things first. This is the Paul Rubens Granulating and Layering Colors. Last year I bought the Paul Rubens Precipitating Colors and it came exactly like this. The difference is this time they added some ox gall into the packaging so you can make your paints move in even more better different ways. And we'll swatch the colors but we'll compare them to the Kiritake Ganzai Tambi and the other Paul Rubens paints I bought last year in a future video. Then this has been on my wish list for a couple of years and haven't received it so I decided to buy it for myself. I'm actually surprised but I did notice on other people's videos how thick this is. I wish it were a little thinner but maybe the paint is actually that thick. So this is the Caran d'Ache Studio Gouache. So they come in these little pans here. So yeah I don't think this actually needs to be quite this deep but that's okay. So we have gouache in pans and then you have a tube of white and it comes with an actually pretty decent looking brush. I'll show you all these colors here in a bit. Then the Imgram Pyrrol Red. The reason I got this and why it was on my wish list is because I have an obsession lately with PR254s and this is a PR254. Can't wait to see it. This was a last minute addition to my Amazon wish list. I saw this come up. It's just a regular old metal tin. However, inside it came with 21 full pans and it has the metal clips for them and everything. So I'm pretty sure I'll be able to use this in my studio because I have a lot of paints and I wanna make mixed palettes and I have so many palettes I'll probably never fill them, but I still wanted it and I got it. This looked kind of fun. Book I had on my wish list for a couple of years by Shauna Russell, Watercolor Animals. And she just goes through her tips and techniques for painting these really fun and bright watercolor animals and I thought it would be fun to go ahead and follow some of her tutorials, see what I can create, what I can learn from her, and have some fun paintings at the end. This was not on my wish list, but it was sent to me by Lightwish. Lightwish wanted me to try their new soft oil pastels. These are the square ones. A couple of people have already done reviews on these on YouTube, and mine will be coming up in a couple of weeks. So show you what they look like real quick but we aren't going to swatch these today because there's 48 of them which is a ton of them and I will be doing a deep dive into them later on the channel so no big deal. Anyway you can see how lovely they look and the neat thing about them is the square part and I like the round part too but the square part is beneficial because of the corners and you can get sharper edges so this will be fun to try and I do like oil pastels. I do not like chalk pastels so this was something I was very happy to say yes to and then we have an extra large white and black over there plus regular size white and black and some grays. Anyway we'll get into this later but it looks like a pretty nice set. <laughs> this has also been on my wish list for a long time, well a couple of years anyway. This is the Golden Open Acrylics and this is the landscape version. So these are the colors there and I'll show you what all these colors look like. 
So it comes with 22 mil tubes, except for the white is a 59 mil tube, which is really nice. And then it comes with this open thinner, and you use this to adjust and maintain the working properties of colors and reduce brush drag. I'll show you those colors in a minute. Also, if you've watched my other haul videos after Christmas, then you know I received a couple of Kiritake palettes that hold these pans. They're very special and I needed some more paint to fill them up. I actually only needed two more pans to fill up the palette I had, but then I received a duplicate palette. Instead of sending it back and trying to exchange it for something else, I decided to keep it and just order 18 more pans. So I got this 12 set here because two of the colors I wanted to order anyway were the natural beige and the gray because they're some of my favorites in my little portable set. And then I also wanted these three colors and so this set had most of the colors I already wanted. Much cheaper to buy it in the set than individually. Saved about 50%. And then to fill out the rest of the 18 well palette, I have these colors here. Now these are right here. The graphite blue and the graphite green are the two that I needed to fill up my previous 18 well palette. And then to make this a complete palette, I wanted to get a yellow, an orange, a red, a green, a violet. And then for fun, I got this yellow gold. And then I could have either paid $7 shipping or spent $30 more in product. So of course I spent $30 more because I don't want to pay for shipping, <laughs> which makes no sense. I could have just spent the $7 on shipping, but I'd rather get product than pay money towards shipping. So I decided to get this Knicker Painter Squash. So this is similar to the Knicker Poster Colors. It's the same brand, obviously, but it's the tubes. And I think this is maybe more of the student line of the Knicker Poster Colors, but I'm not sure. However, I thought it would be fun to try. And so we added that into the order and got free shipping. And then they threw in this Kiritake palette, which just holds six pans but I don't think this is useful at all. I'll put this in my giveaway bin, or if one of you wants this and could use this, please let me know in the comments below. All right, remember I have one more really special product to show you at the very end of the video, but for now, let's swatch all of this. I just set up some swatching fun in my Hanamule 100% Cotton Sketchbook. It is not the best paper, but it will work for what we need today. So we'll start with these Paul Rubens granulating layering colors. This is the first one, PB29 and PG7. We'll see if I need to get an extra little palette out here or not. I don't usually do it like this where I do it right on the paper. It kind of makes me nervous, but we'll give it a try. PB29 and PG7. Yeah, see, doing it this way just puts out a lot of paint there. But I thought it'd be fun to kind of take the paint into the middle and mix them all together. And you're supposed to use a lot of water with these to see their effects, so I'll just drop some water on that part and hopefully that works. These probably do have names on them. We can do a Google Translate a little bit later. Maybe when we do the deep dive into these later on on the channel, I can show you some more about these. All right, this next one, as you can see, is PB29 and PV19. That's very pretty. There's quite a bit of water in that already, so I don't really see much of a reason to add more. This one here has three different colors in it. This is... PB29, PO48, and PY150. I suspect I'm gonna like this one quite a bit. We'll find out here in a second. Need more water. Yeah, that's a neat green. I feel like I could use that just for all my regular paintings. This next one is PB29 and PY150. Ah, interesting. So much brighter green reminds me a lot of a hooker's green. <laughs> Paper's not so happy with me in the middle there. Here we have the PV15 and the PBK11. That came out in kind of a weird chunk. We'll see how that one acts for us because I'm not sure what the chunk's about. 
yeah, just a bit of dried paint at the end of the tube there, which is fine. It just acts like a like a pan of paint. Okay, yep, so you can see the violet coming through. At least I can. I don't know that you guys can see it so much on the screen. Very violet filled, very nice, very pretty. Reminds me of the uh, graphite violet. Remember, I did say I would compare these to those graphite colors of the Kiritaki brand and to the other Paul Rubens paints that I received last year or that I bought. I can't remember if I bought them or received them last year, but it doesn't really matter. So this one is the PB28 and the PV19. Okay, so that reminds me kind of like of a ultramarine violet color. Probably could have used a little bit more of that one. Pulling the green into it a little too much. Let me grab some more of it. Just so we have a good representation there. Don't really know if I got more like I wanted or not. Yeah, there we go. I don't usually do this messy way of swatching, although I did make these cute little sketches myself, so there's that, there's that. Just can't get rid of the glares from the studio lights and the outside windows. I have two big windows in my studio, but hopefully you can see that. All right, those are the granulating and layering colors. Let's try the Pyrrol Red PR254. I'm really excited for this one, as you guys heard in the beginning of the video. Oh dear, that exploded. Okay, I have to grab a full pan and get some of this in it. Hey, emergency averted. That's how much paint squeezed out and I have that much still in my brush. So far, I have pretty much not met a PR254 that I didn't love instantly. So that's why this was on the wish list, as I mentioned in the earlier part of the video. Get a little more diluted version of it out here. Here we are. It's just a beautiful paint. Usually a beautiful pigment. Paper is, is not my favorite. And let's try out these Karen Nash gouache. Now I did not pre-wet these, so we'll see how they reconstitute from dry which is how I like to test them the first time anyway. Oh wow, okay, that's good. So yeah, I ran my brush in there a couple of times, not any more than I would do in any regular watercolor pan. And it's probably not like super thick. I didn't put black lines down in the middle of these swatches to see how opaque we're getting, but pretty happy with what I'm seeing so far. No color names that I've found yet, but I will look further when I play with these more. This is probably a vermilion or something right here. So these are working a little bit better than I expected. I thought that they would probably really need to be pre-wet to be very fun to use as far as their opaqueness and how thick of the paint you get when you take it out of the pan, but I am pleasantly surprised. This isn't too bad. This might be a fun one to bring with me on my trip. Okay, so this one is super transparent though. I don't know that it's really gonna get more opaque. That's just a very transparent color. Wow, that is a deep purple. This actually feels like pretty good paper to use this kind of product on. It's not my favorite for like regular watercolor, but seems to take this paint pretty well. This one looks like a nice bright blue, probably a thalo. Oh yeah, wow. That is one very bright blue. Holy moly. It's kind of neat that it came with a whole tube of white. Plus you have this whole mixing palette space so you can make any of these colors pastel or do whatever you need to do mixing wise with the palette. Okay, PG7 most likely. Didn't have enough water in my brush for that one. Looks like a, I don't know, some kind of green. Oh wow. That is a 
bright green. This one here is more like your lime green or your may green or whatever you want to call it, your yellow green. It's probably a yellow green. Assume this one is a yellow ochre or a sienna. Nice and opaque and thick. This is probably burnt sienna or something similar. Have to see if we can find the colors somewhere online. That one is very opaque. Looks like they're drying nice and matte. This one should be a black and I'm not going to test the white, I guess. Won't really want to take it out of the tube, but we will be taking a closer look at this in the future. So we can test the white and all of that. See how we actually like using it out in the field in the future. So we have just a little information sheet and some stickers that came with it. We're going to skip the acrylics for now so I don't have to get a different brush out and stay with watercolors so that I can use the same brush here. This was set B I believe and I could leave these in here and close the box like that and all of that but I have that fancy palette that I'll be using and you'll be able to see that in a couple of weeks here on my channel too. This one is cherry blossom pink. Lilac, as you can read, since I wrote all the names out for you, I probably don't need to say them out loud, but this one is just a really pretty light purple. Very subtle, very nice. This one accidentally has a line through the name, so this one is Horizon Blue. Again, just another really nice soft pastel color. And then we go deep for some reason into a cobalt blue, which I find interesting. That's pretty, have some resistance on the paper. Probably touched it with my hand or something, which happens a lot with this paper. Lime green. Greenish yellow. Kind of a pretty ugly color. A pretty color that is ugly. Like ugly pretty color. <laughs> uh. All right, this natural beige, like I said in the beginning of the video, is one that in my little portable 14 color set I use a lot because I find this color out in nature a lot and I take that little portable set with me on trips and I paint outside with it a lot. And the natural beige and the gray are two of the colors that I use a lot, so I wanted to get a big version of these. And this rose beige, I think, will be a good addition because it's very similar to the natural beige, just a little bit more pink tinted. Then we go into another deep color, Indian red. It has a little green on the swatch sheet there, but I just obliterated it, so we're good. Another deep color, maroon. Yeah, that reminds me of all my grandma's maroon living room furniture and carpet. <laughs> and here's that other one I really wanted, gray. Yeah, I just find a lot of use for this when I'm out and about. Fun. Blue, gray, deep. This is one I'm really excited about because I love indigos and I think this might be something kind of similar. Yeah. Oh, that's beautimous. Then we have to open these individually somehow. I was hoping they would, ah, they do kind of push through. And the pans are labeled, so I don't have to keep this wrapper, which is good news. So let me just take all these out real quick. And because this one is a metallic color, I will add a little bit of water on it and kind of let it start activating while I paint these others out for us. I'm excited to see them. Cadmium yellow. Oh yeah. That's a nice bright yellow, but can get real deep. I like it a lot. And cadmium orange, just as classic orange. That's great. This cadmium red looks beautiful. Oh, wow. Did not disappoint either. That's gorgeous. I have to look at the pigment information. Kiritaki on their website has all the pigment information for these. So if you're ever curious, you can go find out exactly what pigments in these. Imperial Violet. Yeah, deep, dark, beautiful violet that can probably get deep enough that it would look black if you wanted it to. 
Sap Green Deep is the next one. I'm excited to see this one. Hoping it's a nice deep green. Look like it on the website. Yeah, that's a green I could use for nature painting. Bushes, trees, fields, green eyes, whatever I want. And the two that I really needed to finish out my other palette, the Graphite Blue. Beautiful. Graphite Green. I'm excited for this one. I love greens. Oh yeah. And let's see, that wasn't very long, but let's see if this yellow gold has activated. Oh yeah, it's activated very nicely. Probably didn't even need pre-activated, but that helps. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that covered beautifully. Okay, that's gonna be a fun addition. That is gonna be a fun palette. Now I need an acrylic brush. Now I've grabbed a brush I can use for acrylics here. It just doesn't even have a brand name on it. it just says 5.8, so hopefully it works out okay. Wow, that kind of exploded also. So this one is the Titanium White. Now these are the Golden Open Acrylics. And I've just wanted to play with them for a long time now, so I bought some. It's gonna squish out everywhere. Ooh, doesn't that just make you cringe? It does me. Oh, probably never gonna get that tube open ever again. <laughs> okay, probably will, but still. I hate closing tubes like that. I should have taken the time to clean it up. Oh look, the brush came apart. Good brush. Actually, it doesn't feel too bad except for being a little loose right there. I hope they don't all explode like that, but I don't have high hopes here. Oh good, that one did not explode. Cadmium Yellow Primrose. It has a really nice feel to it. Just goes on this paper smooth and beautiful. Okay, the cadmium red light exploded a little bit. It's more than I can use on this paper. Yeah, it just flows and it's smooth and beautiful. Hmm. See how it is in an actual painting later on. Not in this video, obviously, that would be too much to do, but we will take a deep dive into these in the future for sure. This is the Alizarin Crimson Hue. Very transparent. I don't think I had excess water in my brush either. It felt like the same as the others. So that's one to keep in mind that is more transparent. I noticed that with my other acrylic paints too, there are just some colors that are more transparent than others. Like the ultramarine blues are pretty transparent. A lot of the yellows, please don't explode. It exploded. Dang it. All right, let's see if this ultramarine blue is transparent. Yep, pretty transparent. Now I have it on there pretty thick though. Actually, I would say this is only semi-transparent compared to some of the brands of acrylic paint I have used in the ultramarine blue. This one is a little bit more opaque. It's kind of nice. hate wasting paint by having it explode out of the tube like that. That's very heartbreaking. Okay, this one I'm really excited to see and it looks like it's very transparent according to the tube. Manganese blue hue. I hope it doesn't explode. Yay, it didn't explode at all. Good news. Hey, see what you look like. Ooh, pretty. Yep, very transparent, but butamous, butamous, butamous. PW4, a PB15 colon three, and a PG7. Sap green hue did not explode. Yes, that's great. Now, how useful of a sap green is it? Ooh. Beautiful, deep sap green. That's my kind of sap green. This is a sap green you can use and have your greenery look realistic. You don't even have to mix other colors into it unless you want your green lighter or darker. That's the sap green I'm looking for. I believe their landscape set here can be very useful. Seems like a good selection of colors. 
The loser in crimson hue is kind of an interesting choice, actually. I don't really have any kind of rosy color. I mean, if we add white to that, probably, but no rosy color for any kind of flowery type of things. Oh, I did have too much water in my brush that time. I could feel it and see it. So this yellow ochre is probably not going to be the best representation, although on the tube it is an actual paint swatch there and it shows it to be quite transparent. Nice. So I am kind of curious if we do a little bit of white with the, actually I should just leave that. A lot of white around the edge still. So if we take a little white and add a little bit of our alizarin crimson, which also kind of exploded when we opened. Let's see what kind of color we can get. It's a little bit of drop of water. Okay, so kind of a pinky blush tint. And if we add a little bit of our cadmium red light, which also wants to explode, that is way too much. Okay, it's okay. I'd rather have more of a rose color than the alizarin crimson hue, but, but when I was oil painting all the time, the alizarin crimson is one that I used all the time, so probably will be pretty useful. Let's see what this Knicker Painter's gouache looks like, since I have not opened that yet. That did not work at all. Here we are. Yeah, it's just some very basic looking tubes here. Hopefully they don't explode on us. But that's on this next page here, so we have to let this dry first. Remember to stay tuned to the end because I have that really, really special product that I want to share with you. So one of the reasons I wanted these golden open acrylics is because the open part of it means they're slow drying. So I have been sitting here flapping this page back and forth like this for about five minutes and it is still wet. Like if I touch this white, it comes off on my finger. So it's a little bit more slow drying than I want to deal with today because <laughs> I want to flip the page and swatch the gouache, but it is doing its job. It's doing what it promised. It's drying slowly. So if you were curious about that, it's working. Well, interestingly enough, I got tired of waiting for this to dry. Look, it's coming off on my finger. So I left my house. I drove to the grocery store and did errands. I went to the bank and the post office. So I was probably gone hour, hour and a half, probably an hour and a half. And it's still coming off on my fingers. So they're serious about it being open. <laughs> it doesn't dry fast, but regardless, we're going to flip the page and try out this gouache. I'm going to use the same brush I used for the acrylic. Hopefully this doesn't explode. Painter's gouache, artist gouache. Yeah, we'll explore this in more detail later, but for now, let's just see what it looks and feels like. Hmm, sticky. Good if I add water. Okay, got really nice when I added some water. At least it's not exploding on me everywhere. I'm gonna leave some water in my brush. Oh, that one's got some binder coming out. Oh, wow. These are very strong colors. Nice. It'll be interesting to see how they dry. Here's the yellow ochre. This one is much stiffer. <laughs> it's gonna take some massaging. <laughs> it was dry it up towards the end of the tube there, but oh wow. Okay, that's that's a lot of paint, obviously. If I can get any more of that up. There we go. Well, we'll have one that's really thick, which will be kind of fun to test out and see what happens when it's super thick. <laughs> My water is getting really dirty. Haven't cleaned it for any of this. Oh, another real thick one. I wonder if this paint is older or if it's just kind of like that. Get rid of some over here in the trash can, I guess. The rag. Really nice colors, though. They have great coverage and a good feel, but obviously won't know the feel until I actually do a painting. Swatching is not painting. Whoa. Get back in there where you belong. Okay. Carmine, here we go. Oh, pretty. Wow, these are just really rich and beautiful. 
watered down really nicely too. I have so many gouaches I need to try now. We could do gouache on my channel straight for probably two months. All right, mauve. Okay, I intentionally didn't put a whole lot of paint there because this one's kind of stiff as well. But we can grab a little more. They're absolutely gorgeous. There is no doubt of that. Look how dirty my dirty water is <laughs> for all of these paints. <laughs> my clean water is not too bad. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, the ultramarine deep had some binder at the top. Came pouring out. And my swatch got a little out of control there. I'd... Just having fun with that color. I just is there so much in the brush I just want to like smear it around. You know I should just smear it around everywhere else because it's so pretty. I've got a weird gloop there. I don't know if that's the paint or the paper. Alright, cerulean blue coming up. This one's pretty stiff in there too, except for a little binder separation. Well, if we were ignorant and based our opinions just on swatching, I would be highly impressed so far. That first one felt sticky, but then not at all when I added just the tiniest bit of water. I forgot to erase all my pencil lines first, so it's going to be a bit of a mess. And I skipped the white, but we'll go back to it. Permanent green. This one's pretty liquidy on the top. Nice. They just seem really even. Yeah, except for that weird glob in the ultramarine, but I'm not sure what that is. We have Viridian. Do these have pigment information on them? They do. So this is a PY3, PG7, and a PB15 colon 3. So very multi-pigmented Viridian. Viridian hue, if you will. They just call it Viridian. And I added too much water, so that one's going to look streaky, but that was my fault. And, whoops, that's going to be a lot for a second there. Burnt Sienna. Alright, pretty classic Burnt Sienna here. Black. I'm going to come back up here to the white. This is what my clean water looks like. It's not terribly cloudy, but not fully clean either. It'll be fine for this though. Oh, that white is stiff in there. I'll just put it on there and kind of work it, I think. Yeah, there we go. Ended up with too much water then, but... That was a stiff little glob of paint that I was working on. Right, covered that black square. Okay, we'll see what it looks like when it dries. Again, I had used a lot of water, so may not be a fully fair comparison. All right, let's take a look at everything now that it's dry. Here are the Paul Rubens granulating and layering colors. I think these two are my favorites here. Then we have the Imgram Pyrrole Red. PR254, that's gorgeous. The Karen Dash Gouache Studio colors. So a couple of them look streaky now that they're dry, right? But the way I was wetting them with the brush right then and there, they probably benefit from being sprayed first and then used. So we'll try that on my trip if I bring them. I think I will. The Golden Open Acrylics still have some shiny on them because they're not fully dry and acrylics sometimes are shiny. I mean, usually they kind of are shiny, so that may never go away. Remember, I still have something special to show you at the end of the video. And all of the new Kiritake Gonsai Tambi colors. 
That yellow gold's gorgeous. I'm glad I got that one. I am going to enjoy adding accents and stuff to my paintings. And then these aren't quite dry. That one ultramarine that had the binder separation is giving me a little bit of fits drying. <laughs> I've been flipping it around. I have my heat gun in the drawer, but I'm too lazy to reach over there, get it out and plug it in. But the rest of these look great. They're all flat and beautiful. This could be partially a paper issue as well, but anyway, we won't know for sure until we try it on other paintings. But I like them so far. All right, this is the moment in the video I promised you something really special that I bought that I wanna share with you so badly. I think this item could bring some vitality, breathe some life into your art practice. And I'm really grateful to the lady who made it because what a good idea. All right, all in the suspense. What I have to share with you is this Dina Wakely Media Journal. Let's go down to the desk and I'll give you some more details. So I ordered this and I didn't realize it was so big. Yeah. It had the dimensions on the listing, but you know how we read the dimensions and sometimes we get surprised anyway? Well, I got surprised. This is 10 inches by 14 inches. I'm having a hard time even fitting it on the camera here. <laughs> so they do make a smaller one and I really wish I would have looked at that and gotten the smaller one. The smaller one I believe is the 10 inches by only eight or eight and a half inches, and that would have been a better fit for me. However, it is special enough, and I do like big pages occasionally. Like my A4 sketchbooks are some of my favorites, so I'm gonna keep it, and I'm going to use it. But why is this so special? Because it has so many surfaces inside. Mostly watercolor, but a lot of other things are mixed in. So here is a page of watercolor paper. It's supposed to be cotton rag. So we start out with that and we flip and have a couple more of those. And then we go to this crazy, crazy burlap. <laughs> this is literally a material, but we can paint on it with acrylics. We can staple our watercolor pieces to it. We could paper clip one of our works to it if we want to. I mean, there's a lot we could do here. What I'm thinking I will do is probably use Mod Podge on it and maybe some kind of white napkin or tissue paper and make this a painting surface for me. I have watercolor ground that I can put on here and paint on it and it will just create a different kind of surface to play on. It will challenge my creativity. <laughs> okay, so that's the front and back. Then we're to more watercolor paper, more watercolor paper and this is linen canvas, okay? So again, just a new different painting surface and you can use watercolors on here if you want to. You can use watercolor crayons, neocolor twos, acrylic paint, gouache, <laughs> the lid fell off. Whatever I want, I can use on this surface and it's again, just something new. So if I'm tired of watercolor, I can paint on this with acrylics and it will shrink up a little bit as you put water on it and then it dries. So you have to keep that in mind. And then it goes back to watercolor paper. Don't worry, this is not all the surfaces this book has. Okay, back to canvas, back to watercolor paper, back to burlap, more watercolor paper. See, the majority is watercolor paper, which is great. I not sure what the watercolor paper is gonna be like. It feels pretty smooth. Like you can see the texture on it. I'm sure you can see that in the camera, but the feel of it is smooth, which is weird. Well, we'll have to do a deeper dive into this book as well and see what it's like. I don't want to today because I'm not sure what I wanna do in it yet. I think it's gonna be one of those books that's gonna be like super special, but I'm not gonna be afraid to use it. I just want, to put some thought into how I'm using it the first time. Anyway, after this watercolor paper, we have craft paper. How fun is that? So we can use colored pencils, gouache paint, acrylic, whatever works on craft paper, white gel pens, black fine liners, whatever you can think of. And then the signatures repeat. Okay, so we have watercolor paper, burlap, linen canvas, 
same things and back to more craft paper and there are four signatures in here I'll show that to you you can see the signatures there if I hold it upright I'm really curious if you guys are excited about this as I am I just love the fact that there are different surfaces in there in one sketchbook and it just sparks my creativity it sparks my imagination and again I wish I had gotten the smaller one maybe after I use this one a couple of times and I decide if I really like it or not, I will get the smaller one because it would be easier to take with me. This one's so big, I don't think I'm taking it on my trip next week. I'm gone for a month. I just, I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm taking it with me or not, but I love it and I dream of it at night. <laughs> Anyone else happen to do that? <laughs> I have linked all the products below in case you want to check them out or get some of your own. I feel like I am set for a no buy for this year because I just got everything I could possibly want or need. However, I will allow myself a few strategic purchases. For example, if I open up my Roman Schmall palette and there's a color that I have space for and I really want, I'm going to go ahead and get that pan of color. However, I don't plan on buying anything new, no new products. I have plenty in my studio to keep me busy for probably decades. So yeah, I am on a no buy with the exception of if I want to add a color to my existing palettes. What are your plans for the year? Do you guys have no buy or low buy plans? And what are you hoping most to create? All right, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. Plus, I have a really special product that you're not going to want to miss. All right, I'll let these dry real quick. We'll let these dry real quick. Oh my goodness, talking. Just drop the lid in my lap. This could be partially a patient. Hmm. Daisy and Cassie, actual sisters. Apparently, they like each other. <laughs> Even though Cassie was at my grandma's for all those years, they must know each other, or Daisy just doesn't care. She actually likes all animals. <laughs> She's a good kitty. Anyway, my kitty Daisy and my new kitty Cassie.